In the past, many divers have considered the presence of a remotely controlled vehicle as an invasion, which has both threatened their long-term employment prospects and created yet another underwater hazard by the introduction of an electrical tether which supplies power to the vehicle. Nowadays, however, the divers, along with the contractors and the operators, are convinced that the ROV's remote viewing capability, under the control of a highly qualified operator, serves only to support diving operations rather than hinder them. More importantly, it increases the overall safety of the diver by the assistance of the independent, highly maneuverable television and lighting systems, which are linked directly to dive control. What you're about to see graphically illustrates the ability of the ROV first independently to detect potentially hazardous situations as they develop and then its ability to contribute to their successful resolution. These three real-life incidents occurred in the North Sea. Each had a satisfactory outcome thanks at least in part to the fact that an ROV system was available, allowing the rescue to be observed and directed by the surface supervisor. In this video clip, an ROV is being used to survey a diving bell in the water. The bell has been damaged and cannot be returned to the surface. The umbilical from the surface to the bell, carrying breathing gas supplies, heating, electricity for lighting, etc., had been broken as a result of being caught on an underwater obstruction and due to a number of other simultaneous problems the diving bell could not be brought to the surface. It was decided to seek assistance from another diving vessel which was a few miles away and lower its diving bell down to the same depth so that rescue divers could go to the assistance of the trapped bell occupants. Although the divers in the damaged bell had communications with the surface by means of their emergency through water communications, the intervention of the ROV and its camera pictures to the surface was of immense help to the rescue operation. In this shot, you can clearly see the damaged umbilical with some gas bubbles leaking from the end of it and one of the trapped divers waving at a porthole of the diving bell, which confirmed to rescuers on the surface that he was all right. In this case, the ROV was able to assist, both by providing lighting for the area and by relaying pictures to the surface. Because of the strong current, a line had to be installed between both bells to allow the divers to swim from one bell to the other. The lights in the background are those of the diving bell from the approaching rescue vessel. The divers anxious to have their situation well understood by the rescuers, have hung a sign reading, No Seal, transfer to Uncle John. We see the first rescue diver arriving at the bell. He knocks to signal his presence, and we see him entering the bell where he is going to assist the divers and rewarm them by spraying hot water over them. After one diver was evacuated, and while the first rescue diver was still inside the damaged bell, we see the second rescue diver approaching with the spare umbilical and mask for use by the second stranded diver. He passes it into the bell and waits.
The last stranded diver now emerges, and the rescue diver accompanies him to the safety of the other bell. With the rescue accomplished, the remaining rescue diver leaves and returns towards his own, by now very crowded, bell. Other than temporary discomfort, none of the rescued divers suffered any ill effect from their ordeal. The use of ROVs to monitor divers working in the water has proved on a number of occasions to be of considerable benefit to safety, as well as improving efficiency of work in the water. We see here a video showing two air divers working at a depth of approximately 30 meters, or 100 feet, on the leg of a North Sea platform. The two divers are working normally, one higher up than the other and their progress is being monitored by use of an ROV camera. It can now be seen that one of the divers has stopped working and appears to be motionless in the water. The diving supervisor on the surface would not have been immediately aware of the diver's unconsciousness without the ROV picture, as the diver is breathing normally and to all intents and purposes would be considered to be working happily in the water were it not for the picture from the ROV showing that he was motionless. As a result of the picture, the diving supervisor instructed the other diver to return to the wet bell, seen at the top of the picture, and to pull up the unconscious diver by his umbilical and recover him. It can be seen that the unconscious diver is in fact moving his legs and arms a little. And it transpired after his recovery that he had simply fainted in the water, probably from overexertion, and was indeed recovering consciousness by the time his colleague was assisting him back to the wet bell. There are many examples of situations in which an ROV has seen a possible safety hazard before it would otherwise have been spotted. And it's now common for diving contractors to monitor the condition of divers in the water by means of an independent ROV. The next incident occurred on the seabed some 140 meters or 460 feet below the surface of the North Sea diving was being carried out from an installation and the divers were providing support on the seabed for drilling operations. The diving technique being used was saturation, which involves divers living in chambers on the surface under an equivalent pressure to that existing on the seabed. The diver was working out of a diving bell and was monitored from the surface using a small ROV.
In this case, the diver had been asked to cut off some steel from wellhead equipment on the seabed. Prior to undertaking the operation, the divers had been trained on a mock-up and were familiar with the task. The diver was using oxyarc cutting equipment to burn through the steel. During the cutting process, an explosion occurred, which shattered the visor of the helmet, winded the diver, and burst both his eardrums. This photograph shows the condition of the helmet after the explosion. Here you can hear the diver's breathing pattern, followed by him saying hot and cold to tell the diving supervisor to switch the electrical power for the burning equipment on and off, followed by the explosion. As his helmet flooded, the diver managed to open his free flow control valve in an attempt to displace the water prior to losing consciousness. The bellman, unable to assist the diver by pulling on the umbilical, which was entangled on a guide post, had to lock out of the bell and rescue him. Meantime, a remotely operated vehicle was being deployed out of its underwater garage to assist in the rescue by providing a visualization of the situation to the surface. We now see the film shot by this ROV during the rescue. The stream of bubbles at the far end of the structure is coming from the diver's free flow leaking through the shattered visor of the helmet. The bellman reaches the diver and is attempting to place him in a face-down position to allow some gas to be retained in the helmet. He's unsuccessful because the weight of the diver's bail-out cylinder tends to turn him repeatedly onto his back. The bellman tries to get the diver back to the safety of the bell as quickly as possible. Thanks to his overall view, the ROV operator has noticed the injured diver's umbilical is snagged. He repeatedly tries to attract the bellman's attention by following the umbilical back to the point where it is snagged. 